Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt and in this video I'm going to go over balancing or writing balanced nuclear equations. So let's get into this. So um, the three types of uh, decay that I went over in my last video in, or uh, a past video are the alpha decay, beta decay, and gamma radiation. So I'm gonna just going to go through those three and in this video, I'm just going to show you what a balanced nuclear equation looks like and the key components to having a balanced nuclear equation. In another video, I'll actually go over how to balance those equations. And if you're given uh, an equation that's missing a part, how can you figure out what that part is, what that missing part is? So in this video, uh, I just want to go over some basics. So we have our alpha decay, beta decay, and gamma radiation. Um, so for alpha decay, we said before that that is going to be the release of an alpha particle. And so this is our alpha particle uh, with the, it's, remember that the alpha particle is a uh, helium nucleus. Uh, it's basically a helium atom without any electrons. So it's got two protons. So hence the bottom number is two and it's got uh, four, it's got a mass number of four, uh, which means it's got two protons and the two uh, neutrons along with it. So some things I want to point out is first, um, you in a nuclear uh, equation, you start off with some sort of parent isotope and then that will give rise to a daughter isotope, which is one of your products. OK, so you could have more than one daughter, uh, daughter isotope. Uh, but remember, the daughter isotope comes from the parent. So we use this terminology, parent isotope and daughter isotope. So just like parent and daughter in human relationships, the daughter comes from the parent. And so in this case, the isotope that we are starting with is called the parent isotope and the, uh, re the, the product isotope that we end up with is the daughter isotope and so that's the first thing i want to point out the second thing i want to point out is these numbers on the top and the bottom of your isotope symbol so um, i went over this in other videos and maybe your teacher's gone over this but um, i just want to make sure everyone knows so the top number is called the mass number i'll write that down here so this top number is called the mass number and that's equal to the number of neutrons plus the number of positive protons. So we have neutral neutrons and positive protons. So the mass number is protons and neutrons together. The bottom number, that's your atomic number. And the atomic number is equal to the number of protons, just the number of protons. So you got to know what these top and uh, top and bottom numbers mean. So the top number, again, the top number is the number of protons and neutrons. That's going to be the bigger number. And then the, the bottom number is the number of protons. So it's a smaller number. And if you want to know what the number of neutrons is, you just take the number of protons and subtract that from the mass number and what you're left with is the number of neutrons. So that's an easy way of figuring that out. Okay, so in alpha decay, you start with a parent isotope. In this case, we have uranium-238. Uranium is number 92 on the periodic table. And that's gonna lose a helium uh, nucleus. So it's gonna lose two, two protons and two neutrons. So what happens is, the, you'll lose a total of a mass four from your mass number. So because you're losing four particles, two neutrons, two protons, so you lose four. And so this number goes down to 234, and then you're losing two protons from this atom. So this goes from 92 to 90. And so now you have a different number of protons and therefore a different element. So you look on the periodic table and number 90 is thorium on the periodic table. So we now have a thorium atom as our daughter isotope. 
And here, the missing four particles, two of which are the protons, is in your alpha particle. So the alpha particle is emitted from the nucleus of your urania, uranium atom. So that loses the alpha particle. And then what's left is your daughter isotope. And the other thing I want to point out is, and this is really important for your balanced nuclear equation, is that what is being balanced here? It's the nuclei of the different sides of your equation. So here we have one nucleus. It's got 238 total nucleons or particles in the nucleus. And so... Uh, we want to conserve that. So remember the law of conservation of mass, right? So the law of conservation of mass says that mass on both sides should be equal. So we're saying that the particles in the nucleus should be the same on both sides. So we have 238 total, total particles, protons and neutrons. So on this side, we should have the same number. So we, here we have 234. Here we have 4, so 4 plus 234 gives us 238, which is the same on this side. So the top numbers, the top mass numbers on one side of the arrow should equal the total top number on the other side of the arrow. So both sides of the arrow should add up to the same total number, okay? So here we have 238. Here we have 234 plus 4, which gives us 238. It's the same with the bottom numbers, too. So the bottom numbers on both sides, the total of the bottom numbers should add up to the same number on both sides of your arrow. So here we have a total of 92 from the uranium. And here we have 90 for thorium and 2 for the alpha particle. And so 90 plus 2 gives us 92, which is the same as what's on this side of the arrow. So it balances. So this is an example of a balanced nuclear reaction. Okay, so let's go on to the beta decay. Same thing, uh, but I do want to point out beta decay. What, well, beta decay, as we said in the previous video, is uh, where a beta particle is released from the nucleus. And, but we also said that the beta particle is a negative electron. So it's very much like the negative electron. We say pretty much we say it's a it's an electron coming from the nucleus, but where is this electron coming from? Uh, well, where it comes from is the a neutron in the nucleus. And so this is the symbol of a neutron. So the top number here, when you're dealing with particles, the top number usually is your mass number like normal, and the bottom number deals with charge. So we have top number is a positive for one for the new, new, uh, neutron because it's got a positive one uh, AMUs, right? So it's, uh, it's one uh, particle. Uh, and then the bottom number is zero because the neutron is zero. So one and zero with the small n, that's our symbol for neutron. And what happens in the nucleus is that the neutron is going to break apart into two other particles. So we got this neutron that breaks apart into a beta particle, which is basically your electron plus a proton. So a proton plus an electron comes together to form a neutron. That's probably maybe an overly simplistic way of thinking about it, but it's not an incorrect way to think about it. Um, so you have a negative particle plus a positive particle, particle, positive and negative cancel out, and you got zero, right? And then your beta particle, which is your electron, has a zero mass number. Doesn't mean it's massless. It just means that we're giving it uh, a zero mass number because uh, there's, no, there's no protons or neutrons. You could think of it that way. It's much, much smaller than a proton or a neutron. So we effectively just give it a zero uh, for the mass number. So the mass number, and here we have a positive one because the mass number for a proton is one. And then we got a positive one charge there. So you can see that again, for this nuclear 
uh, equation here that the top numbers add up to the same on both sides. So we have one here and we have zero and one there. That means zero plus one is one. So they equal, both sides are equal. Here we have zero for the bottom number. We have negative one plus one. That's going to cancel out. That's going to add up to zero. So both sides are the same. So the bottom number, the total, the total bottom, the total of the bottom number is the same and the total of the top number is the same. And so, so I just want to point that this is what's going on in your nucleus. This is where the beta particle comes from. Nucle a neutron in the nucleus breaks apart into a beta particle and it leaves behind a proton. So your nucleus loses a neutron but gains a proton in the process. And what did we say about protons? Pro changing the protons changes the identity of the element. So here's an example. Here we have our thorium. So here's the thorium. So thorium here can undergo beta decay. So here's our beta particle. And then the element that's left over is your proactinium. And so you'll see here that, again, the top number on both sides, the total of the top number on both sides should be the same. So the total here is 234. And then the total here is we have zero for the beta particle for the for the mass number, and we have 234 for the mass number of our proactinium. Add zero and 20, 234, that gives us 234, so they're equal. Same for the bottom number. Thorium has a an atomic number of 30. I'm sorry, 90. And here we have a negative one for the beta particle and we have 91 for proactinium. So 91 minus one gives us 90. So they're equal on both sides. And then finally, we have our gamma radiation. So here we have an example of a high, a boron atom that is a high energy excited state. It's in a high energy excited state. That's what the little asterisk there. So if you see an asterisk there, it means it's a, in a very high energy excited state. And then what's going to happen is that it's in order to become stable, to lose some of that energy, it's going to emit a gamma ray. So here, uh, because the gamma radiation is both zero in charge and zero in mass, none of the numbers are going to change for your parent, for your daughter isotope. So your parent isotope is going to be the same as your daughter isotope uh, if you're only emitting gamma radiation. Now, Usually gamma radiation is, comes along with other particles, other kinds of decay. So beta de decay, uh, your alpha decay can also emit your gamma radiation. And the reason for that mainly is because when you lose particles from the nucleus, the nucleus needs to rearrange, right? So the particles that are left behind after the decay need to rearrange and stabilize again. So they're going to rearrange in order to reach more stable, stable uh, con uh, construction. And so that, that rearrangement is what gives off the, radi uh, the gamma radiation. So the gamma radiation, that energy is released due to the, uh, the, the moving and, and reorganizing of the particles in the nucleus to reach uh, a stable state or a more stable state. And so this, you can see that 11 is on the top. On this side, 11 plus 0 is obviously 11, so that's equal. And then the bottom number is 5 on this side, and then 5 plus 0 is 5. So both the bottom and the top numbers are balanced. I hope this was a helpful video. Uh, one thing I want to point out is here for our gamma radiation, uh, this is very high-level radiation. So... Gamma radiation lies very, very far uh, to one side of the, uh, the radio uh, electromagnetic radiation scale. Um, most high energy, very, very small uh, uh, wavelengths. Um, so the smaller the wavelength, the higher the energy. And these, uh, these uh, uh, high energy uh, waves or light um, has a little high, high, very high energy because the wavelengths are so, so tiny. So, 
so that and then because of that, they have again that high penetrating power. They can go through paper. They can go through your clothes. It, it requires a very thick lead or very thick concrete to uh, block out the radiation from gamma rays. So very, very dangerous stuff. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something from this video, if this helped you understand more about the nuclear equations and how they must be balanced, uh, then please like this video. Hit that like button. Um, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell right up there to be notified by other videos I put out. And also put a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.